Hi, I'm Celine, a French architect and a trainer, and today we keep on designing your house like architects, and we are going through the step two, which is the climate. In the previous video, if you haven't seen it, I was talking about the orientation and light. Today we're gonna see the climate. It's really important as good architect to consider the climate before even designing your house. Why? Because whether you are building in a tropical climate or in a hot climate, you will um, you will need to satisfy different conditions in order to permit people to live in a comfortable way. You don't have the same possibilities for each climate. So my advice is to look at the precise climate in the region where you build your house and then to look at architecture which is really adapted to this climate and I will even ask you to look at vernacular architecture in this particular region. Why vernacular architecture? If you don't know where it is, vernacular architecture is an ancient form of architecture. It's an architecture which is really adapted to a specific region and which use local materials. It's, a, it's an architecture resulting from hundreds even thousand years of researches. So when you are looking at vernacular architecture, you have already answered to your questions about climate. How to satisfy a good way of living in this climate? So let's see how it works. To simplify, there are four climates. The tropical one, the hot or arid one, the cold climates, and the temperate climates. Let's see how to think for each type of climate. For the tropical climate, if I would choose one word, it would be ventilation. Because the tropical climate, as you may know, is really humid and it can be really uncomfortable. So, if you take a vernacular example of tropical architecture, it's the Malay house. In the Malay house, you see that the house is not on the floor to permit the air to pass below it. There are a lot of openings which permit also to, to the air to pass into the house. The roofs are larger to avoid the rain coming into the house, but also the roofs are higher to permit the hot air to go into the roof. If we take the hot or arid climate, the word that I would choose would be cooling. It's really important to cool all the spaces. So if you look at the architecture which is really adapted to this kind of climate, there are quite always some patios or courtyards in the house. Because if you put a courtyard or if, and if you put a pool in it or a tree, it permits to cool the air and to restitute the air into the house. So take an ex if we take an example of vernacular architecture in this climate, it would be the Halawa house in Egypt. As you can see, this house has really thick walls to permit an insulation from, from the outside to the inside. And also you can see that the walls are painted in white. Why? Because the white colors permit to reflect the sun rays. And there are really little openings to avoid again the heat from entering into the house. In the cold climates, the principal word would be insulation. If we take an example of vernacular architecture, we can talk about the igloos. And you see, in the igloos, you may think that they are made of ice, but in fact, they are not made of ice, they are made of snow. Why? Because ice is composed mainly of water. Whether snow is composed of mainly of air. And air is one of the best natural insulation in the world. Also in the igloos, the walls are really thick, again, to permit a better insulation. In the temperate climates, uh, the these climates are not so extreme. I would choose the word mix to define the architecture which is adapted to, to this kind of climate because in a temperate climates you have the Mediterranean one, you have continental one which are um, dry but cold 
and also hot sometimes and you have also the oceanic and cold uh, climate in the Nordic country. So if we take some example of vernacular architecture in temperate climates, we can uh, talk about the Roman, the antique Roman house, which as you can see was composed of a courtyard, like uh, in the Arabic house. Or we can take the example of a Viking house. The Viking house is composed of, of some really thick wooden walls to permit a good insulation. To finish, I would like to say that I've noticed on Facebook mainly that many students and architects uh, in Africa, for example, design houses like in Europe. And I think it's really unfortunate. First, because uh, in Europe you have not the same climate, so I think it's not really logical if you are in a tropical climate. And secondly, because I think we should be proud of our origins and our vernacular architecture. In Africa, for example, they have, in some countries, they have developed great construction technique with mud, and it seems like many architects have forgotten this technique. I think as architects, we should be proud of where we come from, whether we are coming from Nigeria, whether we are coming from, from Russia, or whatever country, it's really important, don't you think? Anyway, if you have a question about climate, don't hesitate to leave comments. You can also book a free consultancy with me. The link is in the description. You can also join my contact list. The link is still in the description. That's it for today and I see you in the next video.